Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and um, I'm having a bit of a break from uh, working on the new workshop um, mainly because there's about two inch, two or three inches of snow on the ground and um, yeah, it really came down um, last night and um, earlier on today and um, I've discovered that my, um, my new car doesn't like snow and ice um, <laughs> It's my old, I used to have a little old Vauxhall Aguila, proper old banger, and uh, that would drive over anything. I had um, snow tyres on the front of it, and um, I could go anywhere in that thing. I've bought something newer and posher, and um, I tried going um, going out earlier, and I was um, just slip sliding everywhere. So I thought I'll I'll stay in, and um, I'll play with some other things. Anyway, what I thought we'd do in this uh, video, um, I remember this from a couple of videos back, it's that um, Cosa Melody Maker. And if you remember at the end of it, um, we got it to play but just um, a little bit and then it kind of like fizzled out on us. Anyway, after the video I had a bit more of a play with it. And um, all I did was um, clean the aerial sockets and um, I started pulling in quite a few stations with it. Um, but this radio does still have a problem. Um, I'll demonstrate actually. Basically, I'll let's plug it in now. Switch on. Bear in mind, we've only changed two capacitors in this um, radio. And looking at the circuit, and actually speaking with someone um, who um, posted in the comments section, the two capacitors I've changed really um, are the two that I needed to change. That one that I wasn't sure about that went to um, grounds actually off the anode of the um, output valve. So if that had shorted, that would have pulled our HT right down and we'd have um, basically had no HT and that would have probably smoked. So it was a good idea to actually change that um, change that capacitor and also we changed the um, uh, grid coupling capacitor for the output valve as well. But they're, they're the only capacitors we've changed in this um, radio. But with the number of stations it's actually picking up, I think the other ones, at the moment we can at least leave them. We'll switch on. And we should get the radio to play. And so I've cleaned those connections up on the aerial and the earth, and I've got it connected up to its loop aerial inside. We'll probably get a bit of background noise because it pick, tends to pick up from my um, lights and the um, camera, the switch mode power supplies. But and here we could get the radio playing. I won't let it play on any station for too long, but. There was a lot of controversy because he revealed reasonable. That's why we are um, I'm proud of that. doing such a. So, for around this area and just on its internal loop antenna, it's not doing too bad. Um, we're still really poor at, um, at isolation, poor either for incoming travellers or for I mean, people who have. I even got it playing on long wave. No, I'm feeling that's actually RTU Radio 1 from um, Ireland coming over. So I think I picked Radio 4 up as well. Your hand up, yeah. telling the truth. There's Radio 4. Okay, hand. So it's, to be able to pick RTU Radio 1 up here, the radio is actually performing quite well. The schools have long justified their price of it. There it is there. I'll switch off now. Now the problem is, the radio will actually only play for perhaps about 5 or 10 minutes and then the volume starts fading fading out on it. Um, let's get it unplugged and let's get in the back of it. And what? Uh, screwdrivers. Where have I put my screwdrivers? I think I've left my toolbox in the other room. Um, let's see if I've got something I can just get, can get this back off with. This is not the recommended way of um, removing the back, but there we go. Um, I've lost my train of thought now. Now, let's say, let's get the back off. 
so yeah, anyway, that was that's where I was up to. Um, basically, um, what I did is I w had it playing, and I was I was measuring the um, HT on the um, output valve, and it should be around the say. 220, 230 volts range for the um, HT on the anode of the um, output valve. That's basically goes to, so not the anode, is it the anode of the cathode? I can't remember now. Um, basically, through the, uh, it's the anode, isn't it? Uh, through the um, output transformer, so you have your HT coming from the rectifier uh, through your output transformer and then into the um, output valve and um, measuring that so if the radio was working perfectly it should be around the say 230 yeah 220 to 230 volts would be um, acceptable uh, when I measured it uh, even with the radio playing reasonably it was only around about the 200 volts mark and as the radio played and it got quieter and quieter and quieter um, that HT basically started dropping, got round down to around about the 180 volts um, mark, which is you know really not enough. So I have a feeling that the rectifier is basically well knackered. It's um, well tired on this thing. Um, the output valve itself, um, the output valve itself again, it's it's not in um, great condition um, there's lots and lots and lots of deposits on the inside here um, see it's, it's had a very very hard life that might still be okay but it also might uh, have grid emission on it it uh, might have heat cathode charts in it I don't think it's in great shape but I'm pretty sure that the uh, the rectifier valve. Let's just pull this out. Oh, and one thing to mention on these sets that um, someone did actually point out with these um, BAA valve holders, um, they have a retaining um, spring on some of these type of valve holders. And as the chat, as uh, one chap I was chatting to mentioned, some of them are thicker than others, and on the really thick ones. If you're not careful when you're actually pulling the valves out, you actually risk breaking the little glass um, pip there off the valve. Now, fortunately, on this radio, these are the um, thinner type. What can also happen if the radio has been uh, stored anywhere particularly damp is um, these can actually corrode slightly and they can actually corrode into place. And again, you have the same problems when you pull the valve out. Uh, you actually end up breaking that pip off because of that um, ring there. Now, fortunately, in this radio, it's obviously been stored somewhere reasonably dry. Um, they haven't corroded, and they are the thinner type rather than the um, thicker type, so these do pull out okay. Um, I've not had any problems with this. Um, I have had that issue before in um, a DAC-90 where they'd actually corroded somewhat. Um, not all of these B8A valve holders actually have that retaining um, ring. Some just rely on a little metal, or a little bit of an indent in the metal here where the pip goes to um, retain them. But um, it is something to bear in mind when working on these, just to not just to yank the valves out without first just checking that that ring is either um, loose or uh, just get a little screwdriver and just make sure you can move it and be gentle when you're actually taking the valves out. It, only, it does only apply to these um, BAA style valves as well. Um, just something worth bearing in mind. Anyway, um, let's pull the rectifier out as well. Oh, there we go. That was a bit tight, but uh, it's come out okay. And again, that, it, it does look very, very um, well used. So I think we will, um, I definitely think we will um, have a go at probably testing these valves and yeah, I mean at least I can read, at least I can read the print on that one as where um, you can't even read the um, print on that but fortunately um, Steve over at um, Steve's um, Vintage Long Stay Workshop he um, actually um, 
identified these for me. I didn't even have to look them up. He, um, he did it and posted it on the comments of the previous video that I actually did on this. So we've got um, an EL41 um, output valve and a um, EZ40 uh, rectifier valve. So that's nice and easy to uh, that's nice and easy to uh, remember. So uh, what we will do because I haven't actually brought this out on. Let's get this out of the way. Ooh. I haven't actually shown this on the um, channel yet. I have shown it on Andy's channel um, a couple of times, but I've taken it over to test valves for him. But what we've got here, let's make sure I've got it the right way up. And this thing weighs a ton. Ooh. Um, this is my um, AVO um, CT160 um, valve tester. Now these are considered one of the uh, probably one of the best valve testers um, made. I think these were made in the late 1960s. There was a, I think there was at least one more valve tester made by Avo after this one. But I think we may actually be able to use it in that position. Because I do believe you can actually um, use this in... In fact, what I might do is um, I might put it down and I might reposition the camera so you can see this a little bit better. Um, but what we're going to do is we are going to um, test the rectifier and the output valve um, from the cosser um, using the CT160 here. Um, I'm pretty sure those two valves are pretty knackered, to be honest. Um, if they are it's not a problem because I do have plenty of replacements for them um, I'll just have to venture down into the um, cellar into my valve stores to find them and it's bloody freezing down there um, but uh, we've got everything we need we've got the CT160 I've got the um, that's the actual technical service manual for it we won't need that but uh, what we will need is the uh, valve data this is basically how we set the uh, valve tester up to um, test um, various different types of valve so anyway I will pause the video I'll get us set up on the actual valve tester proper and we'll um, go through um, testing these two valves and just see how quite how uh, knackered they are so back in a sec okay folks we're set up on the um, valve tester and first thing I've got to say is I've had a disaster uh, as I was resetting the shot up I uh, I let the valve um, fall off the table and I've broken it. <laughs> uh, bloody typical. Like I said, I was pretty sure this valve was um, knackered anyway. But um, no, I've <laughs> I can't believe I did that. No, I was literally I was just moving this round. I, I actually even had it over at the on the other table at the other side of me, and I was just repositioning the valve tester and it rolled off the. Hey, I've got a laminate floor in here. Unfortunately, I should really put a mat down. Um, damn it. Anyway, um, can't scry you can't cry over broken valves. Um, I had a quick rummage in a uh, box, and I've uh, I've got a UU9 there. Um, it's basically that's an equivalent. It's um, it's Mazda's uh, numbering for a EZ40. So uh, that should uh, that should work. Uh, we will start actually by testing this is just out of a uh, random box of valves um, I haven't actually tested it first thing we will do is we will um, we'll test that replacement valve and then we will um, test the output valve and I'm pretty sure I'll probably have to find a uh, replacement for that as well but anyway we'll test this um, replacement rectifier valve because I'm pretty sure that well it's no good now but um, even, <laughs> even so I don't think it was any good um, 
Right, uh, let's um, just look up the data we need for the EZ fighting. Now, I really should have done this before I press record, record on the uh, camera again, but in fact, um, just to make this quiet, this quicker, uh, just bear with me a sec. Okay, I found the. I basically I dug up the online um, version because it's easier. So what we need to do, basically, to set this uh, valve tester to um, the valve you're actually testing, you've got. Uh, I'll just zoom you up so you can see what I'm um, looking at. You have a set of um, rollers here, so we need to set that to the number sequence in this um, in the valve data book, which I've got on my phone here. So for an EZ40 um, valve, we want um, on the first bank there. We want 280, so um, I look here. I can't quite see that with the way I've got the valve tested. Let me see if I can just get that down a little bit, that's better. So that's um, 2, 8, 0. And then we want nothing 09, so we can use 0 for that. Then we want 0 09, and then we want 130, yeah, 130. One, three, zero. Right, we'll get you down back onto the main panel. And what we want is we want to test, set the filament voltage, which is this control here, to six volts, which it already is. Then we want to set the um, the current, the milliamps which I believe is on which one's it on now it's not on these is it it's I haven't used this tester for a little bit um, it's on here that needs to be on zero this one needs to be on using the uh, rectifier scale it needs to be on 30 which it is on oops that should be okay there that's not going to move any further um, this bench is a little bit small to have this um, valve tester on, it's a bit of a pain really. Um, hence another reason why I, um, I'm doing the new workshop. So I'll have a nice big bench to um, use my test equipment on. Okay, um, so that's set right. Um, we will put the valve in the appropriate, oops, put the valve in the appropriate socket. Which is that socket there. That pushes in. First thing to do is check the heat continuity, which is good. And we can do various insulation tests. What we really want to do is um, see what emission this thing's um, got. Test for emission. Let's see where this needle moves to. Hopefully, once it over somewhere over here in the good, in the good section, it will take a little time to warm up. Well, that's not looking too healthy. So it looks like we might have to find yet another valve for. Um, oops. Sorry about that. I've got the um, camera tripod in a really awkward place here. Um, so basically, that um, the diode that diode in the valve, there's two diodes in these um, rectifier valves, is pretty tired. It will work, but it's probably not much better than the um, the other valve that I just broke. Uh, let's see what the other uh, valve. 
I see the other diode's got a little bit more um, life in it. That valve will work, but it is it's basically on the end of its life. So even though um, we have, basically we haven't gained anything and we haven't lost anything, um, still a myth that I dropped that valve on the floor. I'm usually quite careful with valves. So, so we haven't lost anything. We haven't gained anything. We can shove that in its um, we can shove that in its place and it will work. It's just not much uh, any really any much better than the um, one that I've just broke. I will shove it back in the radio for the. Uh, for the moment anyway there we go that's in the radio now what did I do with the output valve there we go here's the output valve and again that looks pretty um, pretty nasty I think that's really really um, hard used we'll reset the valve tester so we can test that where's my phone Okay, I'll just pause the video for a second while I um, while I find the valve data for it, and then we can um, set the valve tester for um, testing that valve. So back in a sec. Sorry about that, folks. I actually forgot to press record. So let's go through that back again. Basically, I've set reset the um, rollers that you saw at the top to the um, correct for this valve, which is um, what was it now? It's um, 2600054130 so I've reset those up there uh, because this is a pentode valve it's uh, basically you slightly more of the controls on here to actually um, set it up to test this valve so we've got the um, heater volts is the same because it's the same um, 6.3 volt heater but we've set the anode volts to 250 which is what it tells us in the manual here we set the screen volts to 250 we also need to set the um, negative grid voltage there um, that needs to set to uh, minus 7 volts which we've done using that control there so that's set to minus 7 volts our um, anode current should be around about 36 so we set 30 on there then 6 on the second control there and we're pretty much set now to test this valve so if we um, start with the heat continuity now we know we're going to pass that because it actually worked in the radio uh, but we can just go through the insulation test and really what we're looking for here I mean this valve is going to be fairly used um, what we're looking for is where it says replace there if it stay what I generally um, do as a rule of thumb if it stays in that portion there then it's going to be okay it's really you want to, that needle to stay as far that way as you can if it starts moving over towards short here we know there's a major problem in the valve uh, let's just um, test some of the other well basically we can test for heater cathode charts cathode heater um, uh, various tests on here In fact, the next the next one is the heater to cathode test, and this is uh, one of the ones that actually fires the heater up in the valve. That'll start glowing, um, and we actually want to leave it here for um, say 30 seconds a minute because I have seen it before where it's uh, cold. There isn't um, any um, leakage, but as the valve warms up, you'll see this needle start climbing up here. And like I said, if it gets past the red point, really, um, the valve's no good. That looks okay so far so we can do basically we can go for a, um, a test of the actual valve and see how good the actual um, valve is so if we now move it across to test and as you can see the needles actually dropped off there now we can actually use the anode current a little bit to see if we can just fine-tune that and just bring it to the edge there we go and we'll just zero that out to the edge of the meter there We'll have to back it back on. We want it as close to 36 on the um, anode current, so that's 36 milliamps, um, which is what the valve should really be. But because it's an older valve, it may have drifted slightly. Providing it's in that ballpark, the valve should still be okay. That should be about right there. Then we need to use the set zero control, and this will actually give us the um, emission, what's emissions left in the actual valve. So um, what we basically do is we pull this down to the mark where it says 10 there, which is 10 milliamps. So if we move this over to the 10 milliamp scale there, and actually that valve is very, very strong. If 
but let's just uh, slightly readjust the control here so we can bring that there we go and let's just uh, let's just double check that but despite how um, tired that valve looks that's actually testing as a really really strong valve right so um, we can shut off now what have we what have we learned today well we've learned that valves are incredibly fragile and even dropping off a little bench will smash them <laughs> and I'm an idiot but I'm pretty sure that that valve was very 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 tired so the valve that I've replaced it with is also pretty damn tired I will have to have a that was literally just the first box of valves that I um, opened and had a rummage in and I was like oh that'll do I didn't actually um, pull out a good tested valve or anything uh, let's just um, I'll pull that out of the and they do get a little bit warm especially these pentode output valves even when you've just got them in the uh, even if you've just got them in the valve tester let's pop that out we can shut the valve tester back off so yeah basically we know we've got um, a reasonable output valve get that um, closed back up but unfortunately we have um, Our rectifier um, situation is probably just about the same. Get the uh, get the radio back in back in shot. Ooh. Like I said this old um, come on out you come. In fact, that valve holder has been a little bit on the uh, tight side. There we go. That old Mazda um, UU9. Like I said, this should actually work um, okay. It is quite low emission, though. I said that is an exact equivalent of the valve that I um, that I dropped. Uh, we'll pop him back in. These, by the way, these are the even older um, style of BA, um, BAA valve holder. Um, let me just show you. With the output valve there, like I said, the later ones they started making the um, pip there glass, and that's what you can if you're not careful on the um, like I said, some of these where they have got a little bit tight, even that rectifier one is a little on the tight side. Um, you can actually risk shearing that little pip there off as you're pulling the valves in and out. On the earlier type valve, um, they actually made the base out of metal. Um, these don't suffer the same. Um, these don't suffer the same problem, obviously. Uh, we're going to bang that in here for now. So we are. In, this is a radio that I might just you know do a bit on every um, every now and again. Um, I'm in no hurry to get it restored or anything. Like I say, I have uh, many many radios like this, but I haven't shown the um, I haven't shown the CT160 on the channel. And I thought I'd quite like to show that. Actually, I've um, I've had that on Andy's channel when I've um, taken it over to test a few valves for him. I don't actually use it anywhere near as much as I used to. I used to um, sell quite a lot of um, vintage valves on eBay um, years ago, which I, like I said, don't really do that kind of thing anymore. It's, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot of hassle in it, to be honest, especially when you're selling um, internationally. Because a lot of my um, buyers were back when I used to do that were in um, places like Japan. Right, we'll put the back back on this and we'll just see if it'll um, still play and we'll see how well it plays. There we go. Oops, something else fell on the floor. It's going to be so nice when I've got that, um, when I've got that new workshop sorted switch on. I'm going to put that back in my, uh, in my valve tester.
tied up. So even with that really weak valve in there, so it still does play. You saw in your local supermarket, it is well, just not true. I It's actually got plenty of volume. How about face masks? What utter nonsense? It, it, it's rubbish. If, if, you, if you look at the all of the volume the there. Face mask no, you... So we know that the output valve's actually okay. Quite surprisingly, because I thought that would be absolutely um, knackered, but no, it's not. I might actually leave this, uh, I might take this down into the workshop and let it play for a few hours next time I'm doing some work in there and just see how well it plays. I mean, yeah, I think I'll probably do that actually. There's a lot less in interference in there as well because it's uh, on the, really on the outside of the house so um, I shouldn't be suffering all the um, switch mode um, noise issues that I've suffered in here. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. Like I said, this was just a little, um, a little interim video. I just fancied uh, making a video, to be honest, because it's lousy outside. It's freezing cold. So my uh, plans for doing on the workshop kind of got kiboshed when um, my car wouldn't really move in the snow. So um, I thought, sod it, I will um, I'll make this video instead. So I hope you enjoyed that little video. Um, Stay tuned for more um, more videos. We'll perhaps do something computer related um, next video. I don't know yet. Um, thanks for watching and goodbye.